Rule number five, listen to your teacher. Hey there, teacher friend. I feel so blessed to have you here today. My name is Tony Mullins and I'm the founder of TeacherTony.com, a website dedicated to helping primary teachers find joy-filled growth in their classroom. If you'd like to show a little teacher love, please consider hitting the subscribe button below and dinging the little bell. It really encourages me to give my most valuable and helpful content to share with you. So I'm a little psycho about classroom management and the imaginary pixie dust that it circulates through my classroom. Friends, if I am gonna continue in this crazy line of work, I need these tricks to help keep me sane. It's not easy teaching these little people. One vital advocate I have in this fight to keep my sanity are my simple yet transformative classroom rules. Today, I'm gonna guide you through the process of unleashing this hidden power within your own classroom rules. Or you're also welcome to download my class rules and print and implement those as soon as today in your own classroom. Let's begin this process by first pre-assessing your current state with your class rules. Let's ask some questions. These simple yet powerful questions could have saved me as a first year kindergarten teacher, so much time and effort, and not to mention the $5 I wasted on that adorable rules poster. Think of your own rule display. Do your students know exactly what it says? Also, how often do you reference it and how apt are you to reinforce what it says? I'll speak to the memory of poor little unexperienced first year teacher, me. Tony, do your kids know what your rules poster says? Um, well, maybe. They have no idea what it says, you bonehead. It has 35 words. They can't even read the letter A. Tony, Tony, Tony. Okay, here we go. This is a little easier for you. How often do you talk about your class rules? Um, I mean, I, I tell them to sit down and be quiet an awful lot, and that's sort of what rule number two says. Oh, goodness. As you can see, I wasn't really on top of this aspect of my classroom in the past, but thankfully, I did find my way. And now my class rules play a prominent role in my classroom to help regulate student behavior and make me just a happier teacher. And now I'm going to teach you how to do just that. Step number one is mindful design. If your class rules have not played an important role in managing student behavior up to this point, it may be time to revise or even recreate your class rules. If you teach primary grades, your rules must contain the following qualities. They must be simple, concise, and all-encompassing. Let's talk about simple rules. Simple is supreme when it comes to primary students. If they can't understand it, they can't heed to it, folks. It's not going to work. You need to cut down your current rules into the most simplest, easy to digest terms possible. What I mean by that is this. If those terms do not naturally occur in the child's conversation with friends or with adults, you need to slice them out of there. They don't need them. Why do we put terms in our expectations that they don't clearly already understand? During my first year of teaching kindergarten, my rules had words like personal property and directions and respect. Rookie. After you've determined your rules are simple, you also need to make sure they are concise. 
cut out all of that fluff that you don't need. We know kids can't pay attention to us for more than five seconds without seeing something shiny. Oh look, there's something shiny. That is why your rules need to be concise. Let me give you a good example of this. Formerly, one of my rules said, be kind and respectful to others and yourself. But to make it more concise, I cut it down as much as possible. And the new rule is simply be nice. Do you see how that has the same effect, but without all that fluffy stuff that leaves extra time for kids to get distracted? We're not gonna have that, nuh -uh, not here. Let's not forget that once our rules are simple and concise, we also need to make sure that they are all encompassing rules. Choose rules that can translate in many different ways to cover a large area of the bad behaviors that you see happening in the classroom. I hate to brag, but I only have five class rules that are very simple and concise but I have never found a bad behavior that wasn't covered within them. Now you are ready for step number two of this process, and that is provide priority. Personally, one of the top priorities in my day is getting up in the morning and reading the Bible and meditating on it. Why do I do that first thing when I wake up at 4 a.m.? Because it's important to me. Our rules are so important to the goals that we have in the classroom that we want to put them at the top of our day. To do this, you need to create a rule review ritual that you do every day with consistent cues for your students. Create a rule startup ritual that you repeat day after day, no matter what. My own ritual has changed throughout the years, but it looks something like this. Students enter the room and put their things away. Students then begin independently on bell work. I ring a bell to cue that bell work is over and it's time to clean up. Students transition over to the carpet and sit crisscross with their hands in their laps. From there, I give a good morning greeting and we immediately begin our rule review process. Once you've created this startup ritual, your students will automatically see this as a priority. Beyond creating a startup ritual, there are many other ways to demonstrate that this is a priority in your day. You can place rule review on your printed schedule. You can ask students who enter late to do a silent review before they begin any work. You can place your rules in a central viewing point in your classroom. You can also verbalize the importance of your class rules by saying things like this to your students. I'm sorry, we'll talk about that right after we review our rules. Or maybe, guys, I have something really special to tell you, but first we have to get to our rules. Now we are ready for step number three, which is to include interaction. Reviewing rules can actually be fun when you add interactions for your students to complete during the process and this will help them retain that information at a rate you've never seen before. I learned this myself when I tried this tactic with teaching my students their letters and sounds. I simply added a few motions to the routine and they got it down in no time flat, record time, I couldn't believe it. So all you need to do to make them more interactive is to create some motions that your students complete during the rule review. Now let's check out my own rule review routine so you can have an idea of how to get it started in your classroom. But first, let me take a slow down moment and show you each of the motions that go along with my class rules in case you want to jump over to that free download and implement this today. Rule number one, be nice. Rule number two, keep your hands to yourself. Rule number three, no running. Rule number four, raise your hand to speak or to move. And rule number five, oh, it's my favorite. So my students are allowed to get a little bit louder for this one. Rule number five, listen to your teacher. Good morning, second grade. Good, Good morning, Miss Mullins. Oh, what a beautiful sound. Let's begin our morning by doing our class rules. Get ready. Here we go. Class rules. Rule number one, be nice. Rule number two, keep your hands to yourself. Rule number three, raise your hand to speak or to move. Rule number four, no running. Rule 
could be fun and the complete opposite of boring for our students. Let me give you one last nugget of gold here. This strategy also saves me a lot of breath. We know we talk a lot. We know we have a lot of things to say, but guess what? You don't have to say your rules once you make them interactive. Get this. When I look across the room and little Jimmy is poking his partner, I don't have to say, Jimmy, stop poking your partner. All I have to do is this. And guess what happens? Those little hands retract immediately. They know the rule. See how that can save you a lot of trouble? You're welcome. So there you have it. It's that easy. And if you'd like to implement this today, just jump over to my blog, teachertony.com forward slash simple rules. And you can download my rules for free today. Before you go, if you are a happy teacher, I want you to share your expertise. Don't leave without dropping in a comment about your class rules. What are they? How many do you have? How do you make sure they are effective in your classroom? You never know whose classroom you can change with a few moments of your time. As always, I hope these tips bring you joy in your classroom. I'll talk to you soon, teacher friends. Bye.